No matter which chapter of history you look at, almost every royal dynasty had its fair share of bad eggs. The megalomaniacs, the psychopath, the vengeful madmen, and the women who caused a lot of death of their own subjects to quench their thirst. And yet ancient Egypt seems to be an odd exception. A rare oddity that the civilization that was ruled by about 30 dynasties with a combined total of over 100 pharaohs has no records of a ruler that burned their capital like Nero, or persecuted people religiously like Bloody Mary, or forced a huge revolt like Louis XVI. The Lord of the Two Lands constructed marvelous temples and pyramids, and they made the laws and collected taxes and waged wars posing as Osiris himself. In fact, almost every pharaoh was responsible for hundreds of deaths. Welcome to Nutty History. Today, let's unravel all the weird and gruesome secrets of the Egyptian pharaohs. The Afterlife Servitude the pharaohs of ancient Egypt were considered the closest thing on earth to a god by their subjects. Egyptians believed that unlike common people, when pharaohs died, they joined gods in the field of reeds and continued their life in the heavens. However, royal life is full of privileges, and ancient Egyptians weren't sure if life in the heavens would be as comfortable for the royals there or not. Therefore, it was imperative that the dead pharaoh had enough servants and subjects with them so that nothing was amiss. But how do you make sure of that? Well, that's easy you send a bunch of people with the pharaoh to the heavens. How to do that? Of course, by taking their lives. Archaeologists call this practice retainer sacrifice. Some kings had as many as 500 retainer sacrifices buried with them. These people were not only guards, servants, and concubines, but also sometimes they included important courtiers and relatives too. At the royal cemetery of M. El Kob, the tombs of the first dynasty kings from Aha to Ka'au are accompanied by subsidiary burials. These burials are arranged in rows or blocks, either extending from the royal tomb, as was the case with Aha, or surrounding it. The position of the subsidiary tombs compared to the royal tomb is believed to reflect the relationship of their occupants to the king during life. For example, the most elaborate stella found in a grave next to Ka'au's burial chamber belonged to a man named Sabe, who was perhaps designated as the keeper of the tomb. Further information revealed that Sape was a priest and keeper of the secrets and decrees, a confidant of the king, and that is why he got to lay just outside his king's tomb after being mercilessly devoid of his life, of course. Several tombs were found to contain skeletal remains. The analysis of some remains found in the subsidiary graves of Aha's tomb has shown that none of the individuals buried there were older than 25 years. This suggests that each of them may have been chosen to be buried along with the king. One could only imagine how gruesome and creative the way to perform the death ritual must have been as no trace of a violent death appears to have been found on their skeletal remains. Perhaps they were all poisoned or fed to crocodiles. Sadly, thanks to grave robbers, a lot of records of these retainer sacrifices are lost. Pharaohs were thieves. By today's standards, tomb robbing is considered a dastardly crime a very low deed that most people consider a disdain and disgusting act for not respecting the dead. But in ancient Egypt, there was no stigma around tomb raiding. In fact, the pharaohs had a justified cause behind it. As all pharaohs were considered the incarnation of God Horus, grave robbing an ancestor's tomb was considered simply taking back their own possessions. Tomb robbing was also justified during economic hardships by blaming the dead pharaoh to provide for the upcoming difficult times, a trait that most modern governments follow as well. Just blame the leader before you and have them take one for the team. Perhaps this is why when archaeologists discover a tomb with empty coffers, its treasures of gold vases and braces, necklaces, precious gems, ornate masks and crowns worth millions of dollars aren't exactly missing, but just have been recycled to be used in the successor's tombs. Funny enough, pharaohs still didn't want their successors to repeat their own crimes, so they would like to ask their tombs to be safeguarded with trip wires, traps, holes and mutilation wires, or as we know them, the booby traps of pyramids. However, despite numerous safety precautions, tomb robbing was a thriving part of ancient Egyptian society. Interestingly, only the initial robber was considered to be the desecrator and could be punished for it severely if caught, most likely by losing their head. But once a tomb had been opened and defiled, further robberies were inconsequential, or as they say in modern times, it was on and popping. 
truly an independent woman. Cleopatra is considered the last true pharaoh of ancient Egypt, but she wasn't Egyptian at all. Her whole family line was Macedonian, who were descendants of Ptolemy I. He took over Egypt after Alexander conquered it, but died soon after. Despite being the eldest daughter of her father and his co-ruler, Cleopatra had to play a vicious Game of Thrones to secure her solo ascension to the position of the pharaoh, which involved plots to eliminate her own brothers and sister. She succeeded in becoming pharaoh while almost convincing the native Egyptian population that she was the incarnation of goddess Isis. You see, the world was witnessing the rise of a new superpower in those days, Rome, and things were about to change with Julius Caesar. To survive in this new diplomatic scenario, Egypt was nowhere as strong as it once was, and Cleopatra had to coddle Roman politicians. A perfect blend of beauty and brain, Cleopatra did her best to survive by seducing Caesar first and then Mark Antony, but unfortunately her gamble didn't pay off. Yet still, there is no denying that Cleopatra was an ingenious woman. Speaking of her creativity, she truly knew how to take care of herself without the help of any men, not only in politics or governance, but in her personal life too. While other Egyptian pharaohs built pyramids, sphinx, and invented hieroglyphics, Cleopatra built a small box that when filled with bees would vibrate. Cleopatra was a self-sufficient woman. Horrors of Mummifications Mummification was a complicated process that involved magic, special prayers, and the removal of all organs. Now obviously such an intricate operation took about 70 days to complete. According to Greek historian Herodotus, there was a dark secret behind this religious process, but we will get into that a bit later. The rite was reserved for the likes of the pharaohs and high-ranking officials and rich citizens. The first step in this gruesome ordeal was to remove all eternal organs but the heart. The Egyptians believed that the heart was the center of a person's being, and so that was left in place. After the brain and eternal organs were removed, the body needed to have moisture dried out. Embalmers would place natron, a special kind of salt, on the body to achieve this purpose. After the body was dried, the chest cavity was filled with linens and chopped straw to give a better shape to the mummy. At this point, the body was wrapped in the iconic mummy wrap and placed in its casket. The pharaoh was now ready for rebirth in the afterlife and his corpse was placed in his tomb. Did we forget something? Oh, yes, the dark secret. Herodotus claimed that when it came to mummification, Egyptians would leave the bodies of their women exposed to the elements for three to four days before sending them to the embalmers. This would let the body decay, which was against the whole idea of mummification. But the creepy reason behind it was that the kin of the deceased female simply didn't trust the embalmers to not do anything foul. Pharaohs were liars. For time immemorial, lies and propaganda have been used by people who desired power or wanted to maintain their power. Egyptian pharaohs were no different. They used religion effectively to portray themselves as gods and keep subjects wary of usurping the royal dynasty. And you know, most of the time it worked. Even Cleopatra, who was an Egyptian to begin with, managed to ascend to the throne by having her subjects believe she is an incarnation of Isis. Ancient Egyptians not only left us marvelous architecture, but also decorated it with beautiful statues and artistic paintings that we now call hieroglyphics. These statues and hieroglyphics mostly portrayed the rulers that built them and glorified their reign and accomplishments. These statues and etchings would have you believe that all pharaohs and their relatives were lean, tall, handsome, and beautiful. But sorry to say, it's as big a lie as the pristine figures of modern Instagram models. It would seem from the evidence gathered from unearthed mummies that many of the royal family from ancient Egypt struggled with their weight. The royal families and rich of ancient Egypt enjoyed posh lives of comfort and ease, coupled with a heavy diet of beer, bread, and honey. That didn't exactly produce the strongest, most fit rulers. Do you think we missed any weird secrets about Egyptian pharaohs? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more nutty history.